Hi, I'm Hannah from Studio Heavy, and today we will be answering your frequently asked questions about shipping internationally through Philpos. Wait, disclaimer before I answer all of these questions is all of this is based on my experience and my limited understanding. So I am not a Philpost representative by the government. I'm just helping Common Room and helping you to ship out your products internationally. So if ever there's discrepancies, you always have to do your own research. You always have to learn by your own experience, then you just adapt accordingly. And another reminder that Philpost branches vary. Your experience per branch might differ depending on the staff there, depending on the information that they have. So best always to double check your information on the specific branch that you're shipping. So number one, what Philpost office did you visit? So for our video, we went to QC Main Central Post Office. So this is along Nia Road. Will Phil Post ask for the price of your product? You write the price of your product on your customs form, which you place behind your package. Sometimes they will still ask it, but you already will write it. What countries do they ship to? What cities do they ship to? What are the rates for each of those? And if it's not there, do they ship to this location? So for all of these questions, you can find the answer on their rates sheet, which is linked below. So their rates sheet work this way. There are certain types of shipping methods. So for example, EMS or ordinary mail, registered mail. So for our previous video, we were using registered mail. So kung registered mail, meron siyang international and domestic. So we're looking at international. Then under international, may iba ibang zones, may iba ibang countries. So what we're going to do is look for kung anong zone yung you're shipping to? Is it Asia? Is it Europe? Is it US and beyond? So each may zone, each may price. Then after that, you'll see na they categorized it and they listed it na may city and may country. So we'll use US. So the United States may dalawa na sa list dun. It's US na Los Angeles and US na New York. So these are the receiving ports. Why do US? So meron siyang east and west. So when I ship to US, yung mga near Los Angeles, like California and everything, it lands in LA, na receiving port. So yung prices susulat ko for my package is LA prices. Again, if you're not sure, like, ate, do you ship to this? You can always ask the Philpost branch that you're, ask, you're going to ship to. So lalo na during pandemic times na there were a lot of borders that were closed because of COVID. Dung time na yun, they always had parang memorandum or circular na, ah, we're not shipping to these locations. You always have to check rin yung fill post na Facebook, fill post Instagram for their announcements na, oh, we're not shipping to this. Each branch has a contact number, but, <laughs> but I think yung nakapost sa fill post is just the hotline. For the specific branch number, I think it's best if you go to the branch and you ask. Are the rates all in or do they charge extra fees at the counter? So rates should be all in. What you're paying for is postage fee. So sometimes may, there are fill post branches na parang recommend, hi, we have a return card na you can send with. This is a pink card na will be attached to your package na will be signed by your recipient. Tapos papadala sa iyo, pabalik yung pink card na yun. Like as proof of they got it. This is your this is your parang receipt na they got it. So that's not mandatory, pero some branches per make it mandatory. So it just really depends on what branch. You just have to ask. I don't find it necessary. Because it's a long time to travel. If you have a tracking number already, you already see if the recipient received it. So other than, other than that, it's optional. You should be all in. The stamps, the stickers that they put, that's all part of your postage fee. Are there custom tax or taxes or other fees in general during your shipping? Just want to differentiate the recipient and the sender. So for sender, you're not sent, you're not paying for any tax, supposedly. So other countries have rules. they want their senders to be registered with their government, na parang ganon like yung sa EU dante. But in general, taxes are usually covered by the recipient. So these taxes are called import tax on the recipient side. So pag sender ka, you just cover for postage fee, and then your taxes are your business taxes. 
and other things. Just to protect yourself, friend, you put it in your shop policies that your customers are the ones covering this and that, and that you're only covering the shipping fee and your packaging, packaging or order, something like that. Will you be the one to decide if you will ship items for registered mail? Or does Philpos decide that? So you decide what method you're shipping in. So as we mentioned, you can ship several ways. Ordinary, registered, EMS. So if you come to the counter and you at a registered mail, then they will weigh the item and they'll give you a rate for registered mail. Which is why you can get your first kilo to 2,900. Which is, you think, why is this? So double check your ate na same kayo ng method that you see the rate. For those who are watching first time, I'll just briefly go through what the different method of shipping. So for ordinary mail, meaning there is no tracking number, this is how postcards are sent, letters are sent usually. This is the cheapest option. You turn it over to fill post, there is, they won't, you won't be able to track it anywhere. You just have to trust that it will arrive to its recipient. So that's the cheapest. Next is registered mail. So registered mail is one step higher than ordinary mail. Now you have a tracking number. So Philpost will give you a tracking number that you can place on your package. Then you also have a copy of this tracking number that you can input on a website and follow the progress of your package. For me, I prefer that because you have added assurance that you know where your package is going. You can update your customers. It's not as expensive as other options. So because as a small business, you want to make your shipping experience inviting to your international customers. So let's say they're only ordering one item from you. You'll start your shipping price $10. That's kind of steep for them if your product is just, let's say, $3. That's why for me, I look for a specific way that I could achieve security for my side, but cost efficiency for their side. And then EMS. EMS is another option that Philpos recommends. So ordinary and registered mail, you provide the packaging for this. So EMS, they have this mailer packet. So for that, naman, they have a specific mailer bag. You write your address directly on their mailer bag. They have a specific receipt for it. In my limited, <laughs> in my limited knowledge, you EMS kasi iba siguro yung dinadaanan yung route. So ang mga mail kasi dumadaan to. Nakikisa kayo sila sa flights ng airplane. So baka si EMS baka may mas dedicated siya na path pero I have no I'm not that familiar with it. Can we use thick thick rigid envelopes for registered mail for flat goods like stickers and prints? Yes. If you can find thick rigid envelopes, that would be really great. That's what international sellers use. Nahirapan ako maghanap locally. But it's really good. If you can find it, it's good. You can use that. Is there a required envelope? If you're sending a letter, your let normal letter envelope can can be used. If you're sending small items, let's say trinkets, ganon, you can use bubble mailer, echo mailer. For poly mailer, which is yung hindi walang padding na mailer, I'd say you have to ask your branch. Yeah, so some branches don't allow it. When I was starting sa QC Main, at first they didn't like me using slippery mailers. So yung mailer ko nun, yung kaya mabibili sa shop dito si yung plastic na bubble mailer. So at first they didn't like that. Natatanggal la labels nila and they worry na baka in transit matanggal and everything. So eventually, nung tinay ko ulit, parang okay naman na. So you just really have to ask. Rin. Does Philpos allow your own packaging like craft mailers for eco alternatives or does this depend on the branch? Craft mailers are really good. I think they prefer craft mailers more than the plastic mailers because craft mailers must do medicate. And you can write on craft mailers, they can stamp on the craft mailers. So so they do they require certain size mailers? No na no naman. But in my experience, they recommend not having it too small. Lalo na kapag mailer. Kasi takot nila baka mawala. So they discourage it. Your mailer size depends on the size of your product. So just try not to keep it super small. But you also have to take note that you're writing so many details on your package. Dapat kasha lahat ng deep, lahat ng stickers, lahat ng things dun sa package mo. So again, you have to prepare this beforehand, test your packaging beforehand, and see if all of your details fit. 
on your mailer and on your packaging. So will Philpost provide a box for bulky items or will it come from the sender? If former, does it have a charge? So you can, you can do either. You can either bring your own or you can buy from them. It depends on the size that you need. For my preference is I'll provide already so I can plan beforehand. But if walang wala ka talagang, you need it sent now and you have no choice, you can try asking Philpost. Does the sender provide and print the way bill or can the post office do this for me? So Philpost does not print way bills for you. You have to do it yourself. So for me, I print way bills because I want to. It's actually not required. So some of the people just write it. But imagine if you're sending 20 packages, you have to consider if you're writing all of these by hand, it will take so much of your time. So that's why I prefer printing it. Yeah, so they don't. They don't print labels. It's either you write it or you print it on your own. Is a customs declaration form on your package a requirement before you go to the post office? You can do this either before going to the post office or when you get to the post office. Depends if you already have a customs declaration form. So this is the customs form and for me, I prefer asking this in advance so I can prepare at home, right? Pero if you don't have it and you want to do it in the branch itself, you can also do that. So what do you write on the customs declaration form? This is where you put the contents, what's inside your package and the price of your package. You can either write this value here on, in peso or dollars. Usually I write mine in dollars just because my customers are international and they paid in dollars. Do you pack at home? If so, do you seal them or does Philpos check the contents of each package? Yes, I pack at home. So when I was still starting sa Philpos, they do prefer checking my packages first. So when I was starting, I don't seal them first. So they don't know you, they don't know what packages you sent. They have to make sure that it's not something that they're not allowed to send. Let's say liquids na matatapon during transit. They want to check those things. So once na, again, varies per branch, but once na they get to know what products that you usually send, they can gradually probably allow you to seal them. Na, lalo na if you're sending, again, more than 20. You can't just open everything and then close all of them. Any advice on how to fill in the address portion of sending a package through fill post? And should I write the receiver's address in English or in the language of the country I'm shipping in? Example, Korea. So for filling out the address portion, for the top left part, this is where you usually write your sender's return address. Middle-ish is your recipient address. So how do you write this address? I'd start first line, your name. Next is your street level, barangay, city, and then last is your country. For language of your address, for Let's say, let's take Korea, since Korea may characters yung language niya. But what, I, what my customers tend to do is they type in the Romanized version of their address. So I'll type in Romanized. Can you ship apparel through registered mail, like shirts, dress, hoodies? I think you can. Again, it just depends na lang talaga on your packaging material. So you just have to check if your fill post accepts na yung poly meters. Kasi usually kapag Hood, mga damit, di ba, polymaters yun? Kasi, ano siya, hindi ka naman magpapadala ng box kasi bibigat yung items mo. How long does it usually take for the parcel to have its first tracking update on the website? In my experience, it can take anywhere from, let's say, two working days to around seven working days. Depends how busy they are. Depends rin kung kailan mo pinadala yung product. Lumalabas yung tracking numbers sa website nila once na-scan na ng main Pasay branch. So, how many days to ship from PH to the US? So, in my experience, the quickest is around a week. Longest is uh, two months. So, somewhere within that range, just, just set the expectations of your customers na you are shipping from the other side of the globe. Kung US yan, you're shipping from a different part of the world, best to set the expectations that it will take longer than to promise a shorter time of delivery na hindi mo naman talaga mapapromise. So how do I get paid on my own website? It's through PayPal. Because that's the only way you can get 
international payments. We don't have Stripe, we don't have the other options that um, US sellers have. So for me, PayPal. So for Etsy, naman, let's say you're in Etsy, how do you receive payments from Etsy? Etsy has its own system. They will release the payments to your bank account. Then, do you require buyers online to pay you first before shipping? Yes. And you include the shipping fees in this. So when you're preparing, when you're listing your items pa lang sa website mo or sa Etsy, you already take into account yung shipping fee. May, may field si Etsy doon. How much is your shipping for this product? Ganun. Meron, meron dun sila, kunyari, by um, categories of weight. Basta, you have to look into your platform, ano yung options nila for it, and that's what you get. Aside from the shipping fee, meron yung item fee the cost na item mo. So you just take all of those into account and you have your customer pay these first before you ship. Sige, last question. When is the best time to ship internationally? Is it okay to cater to international markets when your presence locally is still unstable? So for, this is just my personal opinion. Like I'd say, it is always best to keep your doors open. So shipping internationally for me is something that I consider an extension of my shipping options. Let's say you might consider yourself not unstable right now, but the fact that you have this line open means that you want to invite more of this type of customer and you're not closing the doors that you want to expand this way or not. But again, it also depends where you are financially, where your business is financially. If you are not prepared in terms of packaging, if you're not prepared, kaya super layo pala ng fill po sa'yo, baka hindi pala sulit. You just have to plan your way on how often you want to do this. I just really encourage na just keep your doors open to international customers. We have Filipinos abroad who might be wanting your own product rin. So, yeah. I want to encourage everyone that you can always try shipping through Philpos and this is just one of your options. It doesn't, if it doesn't work for you, there are other options that you can try. And if you have other questions that you might, have, might want us to answer, just leave a comment below and message Common Room and we'll try our best to help you to the best that we can. That's it. Thank you for watching.